Okay, welcome to Menopause Month. I'm chatting with Geraldine Joachim. Geraldine, tell us a bit about what you do and then we will go on to the topic. Okay, um, so I'm um, a clinical hypnotherapist. Um, I train, so I started, uh, actually that was after 20 years of being in the corporate, you know, kind of stress sphere. I think um, the reason I became a hypnotherapist is because I needed the help, you know, as often happens. Um, so uh, in 2016, out of the blue, I decided to train as a hypnotherapist, which was completely left field because because I'm not very woo woo. And my, my family were like, are you, are you sure? Really? really? Where did this come <laughs> from? Um, but actually, so that took a year of um, full weekends every week, which so it's quite uh, sorry, every every month. So it was quite a commitment. And also for my husband looking after young kids, you know, all that sort of stuff. But anyway, made it through. And I would say it completely changed me <laughs> from, you know, verging on the sort of flirting with depression, I would say, I like to call it that, um, but very stressed, being um, a no mum. So every time my kids asked me for anything, it was no, no, <laughs> because there's no capacity for anything else. It was just head down and do what we do. Um, and yeah, and I fell in love with this side of things. And then... When I tell you I spent my 25th wedding anniversary at a trade fair in Germany, that tells you how unbalanced my work-life balance was. Um, I had the opportunity then to step away from that corporate and I thought, yeah, this is it. Got to just ditch that. Wasn't It's not healthy and moved into the kind of hypnotherapy thing. Um, although I did sort of specialise in employee well-being and stress management because that was yeah. really what I was used to that was that was you know where where I thought I had that key so a little bit convoluted of how I've come to be on the you know perimenopause hub because that's not stress management for well, employees but kind of is though I mean stress yeah. exacerbates everything doesn't it so does um in um 2020 so the year that kept on giving <laughs> I got a cancer diagnosis at the end <laughs> yay it was like really um so yeah so from then and and I was perimenopause at that point so you know I was going through the stuff myself um but from that point on I really then had to look at my health well-being I also did some training as a well-being uh, a wellness coach um and that's how I ended up here sort of being a, a specialist in um sleep that's particularly something I love talking about and hormones because that's something I understand well yeah. <laughs> so for menopause month obviously for all these interviews it's a bit of a free-for-all and we we cover off any topic you yeah. wanted to talk about things beyond HRT yes yeah 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 there's been a lot of um stuff in the media you know about HRT particularly about you know women not being able to get hold of it um you know so many stories about women having to battle through their GPs and you know literally you've got a, a car crash of GPs behind them as they wade through one to the next to the next trying to find someone who will actually listen and talk to them and a unicorn just... <laughs> yes yeah um so you know it feels really horrible that it has to be luck of the draw you mm. have to happen to live in a place where they happen to put some store in you know women's health matters and you know and it's yeah. not you know it's not just brushed aside um but there are also um so I haven't actually had to do all that because I'm not allowed HRT because of the <sighs> cancer diagnosis um so I've had to do a lot of searching around and what other stuff can we do that will support you know I've uh, hot flushes absolutely getting those electric shocks so my dogs and my cat wouldn't come near me for a period of time wow. because every time I went to touch them I zapped them <laughs> it was like oh zap that um uh, luckily that's passed now so I'm not quite so so electric um but you know we all have those time you know aches and joy you know all that stuff now part of it of course is our 
age, you know, because you don't go through menopause, most of us, luckily, you know, until we are later on in life. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot to do with our lifestyles and what we can do to support, um, you know, ourselves. Because so there, there's so much worry and hysteria around HRT and whether it's connected to cancer or not. And, you know, whether you believe in HRT or whether it's this, you know, I don't know, this fantasy thing. That's... It's a funny one, isn't it? it doesn't, I don't know of any other medication where, where people have quite such strong yeah. views either way. But that, really? that, that's another conversation for another day, I yeah, think. But it, but it is slightly, it is slightly weird. Um, and there's also this idea that, um, and I have heard some women say, you know, they're going to go to the natural path, going to power through, <laughs> power through. Yeah. <laughs> and and also the flip side of that, oh, I think I'm going to give in and go and ask give my in. doctor for HRT. Yeah. It's not giving in. It's yeah. it's a choice. It's, Absolutely. Uh, there's no right or wrong. To, I, I'm about to rant quite a lot here and I'm going to just <laughs> rein it in slightly. But this is literally why the hub exists and why we have such a broad panel of experts is because it is for no one but each individual yeah. to judge or to choose how someone else manages her perimenopause symptoms. And that's why we have hypnotherapists, but we also have doctors, but we also have nutritionists. And because everybody's different. Absolutely. Honestly, and, and, and um, you know, we have technology now that will scrape you off the road and fix you and put you back again if you fall off your bike or, you know, in a car crash. We didn't have that kind of stuff 100 years ago. You'd readily use it. So why are we so reticent about yeah. supporting ourselves? And and it feels a bit like um, so many um, mums will sort of, I think, uh, resonate with this. When when you go through childbirth, there's this idea that, it, you know, the perfect birth, natural, breathing your way through it. You know, you're going to have joss sticks burning and there's going to be lovely music in the background. and Your husband's going to be calmly stroking your brow and if you don't achieve that then and of course you're then you're then going to breastfeed beautifully yeah but the exact requisite amount of time yeah yeah. and there's a bit there is competition in that you know you do get women you know we are a bit competitive there is that like you know oh what do you do oh drugs is there drugs involved oh what cesarean oh my god lect it (gasps) you know so there's this like and it's the same with hrt are you as you say giving in are you um you know not not gonna do it all holistically the thing is as you said everybody's different and they're all right yeah all right any way you just choose to do it is fine Absolutely. And and I've said this several times. If howling at the moon is what solves your problems for you, go and do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. yeah, that's uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now we've got our rant. Yeah. Sorry. Now we've ranted. <laughs> we were both on a good one then. What are the things that we can do, whether we're taking HRT or we aren't, whatever path we've gone down, what are the things we can do to, to help beyond HRT? Yeah. So the first thing I would absolutely say is is that looking after for once in our lives we need to sort of put ourselves first a little bit I know shock crazy you know because I do think women in particular and men do too you know it's not just a a women's zone but happens to be this is a women's zone um so you know I can say that women do tend to put themselves right at the bottom of the list and if there's ever a time in life to just push yourself up a little bit up that rung now is it because those hormones that are fluctuating and changing in you are hugely affected by stress hugely yes um you know we know that um so so it's a bit like um a seesaw so the 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 more cortisol you release the more of your stress hormone the less estrogen the you know so if we can reduce cortisol we actually start to support any natural uh, hormonal release we have and the other thing is your body changes where it starts to produce all those hormones so you know your ovaries are sort of shutting down you know the factory's closing rather um so your body does sort of think oh it's an intelligent thing it starts to think where can we where else can we start to produce it I know fat produces estrogen. So let's lay that fat 
you know, down around our middle, because that's a really good place to put it. And that's why a lot of women find, even though they might have been slim all their lives, they do start to get this little sort of tummy. Um, so, so there's a biological impetus behind that because your body wants to try and produce that estrogen. It doesn't absolutely, mean, yeah, and it's and it's trying to protect you against osteoporosis and yeah. all the other things that estrogen does. It's it's an incredibly clever mechanism. It really is, and we forget that we sort of and it feels like we're in a battle all the time with our with our bodies. You know, we're trying to you know battle against it when once you understand the mechanisms, you can start to work with it so you know you can start to appreciate that little fat bubble around your tummy you know um the other thing is your um your uh, adrenal glands you know they start to produce progesterone but your adrenals are also the place that produces cortisol so if you're stressed that implies that you know to your brain that there's stress equals danger equals life or death Therefore, I need to produce cortisol. I don't really need progesterone at the moment. I'm, I'm going to put that on the back burner because I need cortisol to get me out of this danger. So that is why that stress reduction is so important. Um, you know, and, and I think, as I said, we, we tend to have traditionally put ourselves at the bottom of that pile. So if we can just just upgrade ourselves a little bit from cattle. Absolutely. To, you know, <laughs> And it and it's this is this this is the thing. It, sometimes when I say things like you know just make a bit of time for yourself, it's met with a real oh I can't there's no time. There's a minute. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's always a minute or even five minutes. Yeah. There just is. Yeah. And also the the funny thing is that we the things that we start to prioritize we find the time for. Yeah. So if it means putting in your diary a 10 minute slot at lunchtime or first thing in the morning or last thing at night, whatever, actually putting it in a diary and saying, this is for me, then do that if that works, yeah. you know? Um, and it's all about routine and doing the stuff that you like to do that you're actually pulled towards doing rather than that kind of, well, I know this is really good for me, therefore I must sit here breathing for 10 minutes because it's like, you know, that's what I've been told. Because <laughs> that lady said so, so I better do it. <laughs> he says, she says, that's what I've got to do. If you're not enjoying it in the moment, then you're not going to continue it. So actually yeah. ditch it, find something else to do. And that's the thing, isn't it? I think um and I've said this, I've said this before, you know, we there's there's become this kind of Instagram ified version of what self-care looks like. Yeah. And it's it's just doing whatever it is that that illuminates you. It it's not what works for anybody else. It simply doesn't matter what works for anybody else. Yeah, definitely. You know, if curling up on the the, you know, uh, I don't know, the sofa and reading for 10 minutes every day, it might feel like an indulgence. Yeah. But it's actually doing you it's as good as you doing a 10 minute yoga sequence or going for a 10 minute walk or you know if that is really what floats your boat and you can do that every day then just set that little time aside yeah um you know so and the other thing is of course is our sleep <laughs> that's a biggie yeah. <laughs> so sleep is such a contentious issue because most of us really want it <laughs> And there are problems with getting enough of it. Um, so whether it's because you've got, um, I mean, I, I, I am a sleep expert, specialist, whatever you want to call it. And yet I have a cat who does wake us up at night and who we are still very reluctant to bar from the bedroom. <laughs> because she's our cat and we love her and we don't want her to feel left out <laughs> and I mean, yet I have similar with my dogs yeah I'm like oh but I can't just leave the dogs downstairs how terrible for them <laughs> so if it works for you it works for you but set yourself up to make sure that sleep is prioritized um you know so so my husband <laughs> Tell a little story my husband would get quite stressed with our cat because she'd come in she's a bengal she's very noisy so at some point in the night she'd come in meow meow meowing she has actually because she has to come up over our garage roof in through our bathroom window and down and at points she's brought in various animals including rabbits through 
I oh. mean, seriously, yeah, she loves us. She brings us those things. Oh, she's she's come. Kind of... um, but she will come in and announce herself <laughs> before going off and finding somewhere nice to sleep. So my husband gets really frustrated. Now, with sleep, if you start getting really frustrated, whatever's waking you up, it doesn't have to be your cat, but whatever's waking you up, whether it's, you know, whirling thoughts, you know, feeling wide awake, um, having to get up to go to the loo, the cat. Um, if you start feeling really frustrated and getting a bit anxious and angry about it, you start to release cortisol. Now, if your brain recognizes there's cortisol going on, well, your brain is not going to let you go back into sleep because it thinks there's danger around. So clearly you need to be awake to sort out whatever dangers around. So I said to him, don't get frustrated. Just think about, you know, um, it's really good that she's home. You know, she's safe. She's not out on the roads, you know, whatever. We're really lucky she's come home and just let her do it and go. So the next night, she came in, meow, 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 meow. And, uh, and I heard my husband, he sort of tossed a bit and he went, welcome home, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Passive aggressive. <laughs> I thought, that's, that's just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I've, I've done that with the dog sometimes. Yeah. Thank you for coming onto the bed. Thanks. <laughs> and now, <laughs> just calm. <laughs> But um, yeah, so in it, but in anything, you know, it is about really trying to set yourself up to to give yourself that time to prioritize it, prioritize things like your sleep. So there's a lot of um, as someone who can't have HRT, it can be a little bit frightening hearing about all the great benefits of HRT, how protective it is of osteoporosis, how it prevents dementia um you know all of those really great things heart disease high blah, blah 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 you can't have it and suddenly you're thinking well I'm out in the cold here all these people are in their nice you know in the party house and I'm not okay but there are so many things that we can do for ourselves that will also help to protect our bones to you know prevent dementia now sleep is a massive one for for protecting your brain when we sleep at night, that's when the brain does some housekeeping. It re removes toxins. So there's a, a, a plaque, beta amyloid plaques. So proteins that build up and, and that all gets removed away. People with high buildup of those plaques are the ones who will eventually, you know, get dementia. And it's something that can be seen years in advance, 10, 20 years in advance. So it, so the more sleep you can get, the better. Now that... Um, that might not be very helpful if you're waking up with lots of hot flushes and you know you can't have HRT or you're you're just struggling. So in the main, I would always say don't try and nap in the day because you want to build up sleep pressure. But if you are being disturbed by hot flushes, by cats and dogs, then yes, have a nap in the day. You know. I think also, uh, what you were saying about your husband, and, and I'm just going to sort of extrapolate on that a little bit. For sleep, I think. A lot of us, when we can't sleep, or if we sort of have got into a pattern of waking in the night to go to yeah. the loo or because of a night sweat or whatever, the way we manage that is hugely beneficial if we manage it in a calm way. If we just go, okay, I'm not asleep, I'll just put a meditation on, or yeah. I'll just read for five minutes, or okay, cool, I'm just gonna whatever, rather than, oh, 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 yeah. oh, Oh, you know tossing and turning and getting Absolutely. ever more frustrated and we've all done it when you know the alarm's going to go off in you know two hours time and you like, need sleep but actually your body is still going to relax yeah if you can relax isn't and it? rest and, and and you're right you know and the less stress you get with it the more um opportunity you have the more you know potential you have to slip back into sleep one of the worst things for people is um looking at the clock yeah like, what does it matter what does it matter whether it's three or four o'clock or five o'clock whatever just it is what it is all that happens is your brain starts clicking into 
well, I've only got two hours left. I've only got ooh, one hour 45, <laughs> you know, counting down. Yeah. So so I would always say to people, you know, just don't, if you go up to get, go to the, because most people who get up in the night, they know to the minute what time they got up each night. You yeah. Know? Um, just don't, don't, don't do that to yourself. Ignore the clock, go to the loo, do whatever, come back to bed and you're right, rest rest is as good as and the more you just do that your brain will start thinking oh this is what we do and you will then event you know over time you know a couple of three four five nights whatever it takes slip back into sleep because it is about breaking patterns it it really is um, most we're, we're actually designed to wake up in the night we all have these micro wake-ups you know we go into light sleep it's what we do with that that's the key so most people will start to creep in bad habits you know use your your tablet your 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 iphone start looking at stuff you know all those are bad habits that then start to build what was a perfectly normal phase of wake up for a period into something that becomes a chronic insomnia problem um but the yeah and and I know it can be very frustrating particularly if it's night sweats night flushes you know hot flushes all those things it's having strategies around it so I've got a little mini um I did have a you know one of those uh, like paper fans um and my husband said would you like would you like me to buy you a fan and I'm like oh, okay <laughs> so he bought one off Amazon you know <laughs> And now I'm like, mm. <laughs> you know, and some nights it's worse, some nights it's better, but it is what it is. So if you can just say it is what it is, if I'm really struggling in the day, I can take 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes just to rest. I know that can boost my energy. Then I get through. The other thing is not to talk to yourself like, you know, I'm never going to sleep. Oh, oh, oh absolutely. Gonna, you know. So those stories we tell ourselves, your brain just picks up on that and thinks, yeah, okay, we'll make it so. Okay, party time. (laughs) Hang on a sec. Let me bring in my friend's worry and anxiety. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah, every stupid decision you made over the last 20 years. Oh, my God. And that time when I said such and such a thing to that person. Oh, my God. Yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, your brain's really clever, but it's always looking for evidence. So if you're talking to yourself in those ways and giving yourself this story that you are an insomniac, I never sleep, I'll be awake at three o'clock in the morning, you know, all those things, your brain's going to deliver it to you because it wants to please you. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, you asked for it. Oh, yeah, of there course, you go. cool. Yeah, your, your yeah. brain doesn't think... Yeah. Oh, hang on a second. Selectively, we need to avoid this one. This one's bad. Your yeah. brain just goes, okay, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. cool, bring it. Yeah, I'm excellent at that. So, so yeah, so avoiding that sort of self-talk and, you know, promoting your sleep. Um, the other one was, um, what was it? Osteoporosis is the other mm-hmm. one that that's a biggie. Um, and, you know, strength training. I think we've heard that a lot now. You know, over and above doing doing your cardio stuff, which is all good. You know, whatever exercise you do is great, but but strength based training is going to protect your bones, and also it 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 builds your muscles, which wrap. You know, clearly they wrap around your bones, which which are protective as well. So the stronger your muscles, the you know, the more support you have, supports your joints. You um, you know, and just moving your body however you like however you like is a good thing yeah you and know, I just it, I always feel it needs saying that strength training doesn't need to involve gyms and yeah, any of that so. stuff your body is a weight <laughs> yeah absolutely you know I, I don't do weight I do um I do yoga every day and I do a lot of um things like inversions so headstands and you know things like that I mean that's that is <laughs> building Arm yeah. muscle, a plank. I mean, holding plank, do, just doing your, you know, all those things. Yeah. Um, your body, yeah, absolutely. If you if you can work, and again, you're working with your body and you're moving your body, and that's such a nice thing. And then, of course, being out in nature, although it's not so wonderful at the moment, um, although better than the summer because that hot summer. I don't know. I liked that, it. That, oh, I quite liked it. 
I loved the day. I, I did like the summer. There were a couple of days it got too hot, but the nights I, I did struggle with a couple of times. <laughs> like, oh, God. Um, and it's nice and cool now. It's like, oh, I said to I, I think um, I need electric windows because I we have our windows open at night because yeah. I like it nice and cool. But this morning it was blinking. It was freezing. cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd like it on a timer so it closes at about four in the morning or something. <laughs> yeah yeah that's what we need the the, the ideal menopause house yeah. yeah windows just know when to open and then they know when to close, know when to close. yeah Keeping knows when to come on and knows when to switch off and, yeah you know, that's what we need <laughs> um but, but actually we do we need to set up that setting our environment up just to suit us yeah. it really is it's making sure you've got you know the the handheld fan around making sure you you know got the oh, I don't know the you know you've got access to fresh air and, and and being able to to you know open it wide not have it all painted shut so you can't <laughs> get any fresh air um and having space I think there was a there, actually there was a post recently which I know this this um this is probably not going to go out recently but there was a post recently about being overstimulated and I absolutely agree I think we are overstimulated and particularly because you know we've had the pandemic we've had nearly you know two years of kind of being squirreled away at home and everything being quite quiet and calm and and it is it is quite kind of a lot to go out into public places and you know and yeah. kids and everything is is too much so so it's that cumulative effect um you know that that can kind of make you feel overloaded so then creating a little space at home where you can just take yourself off usually the downstairs loo I find is the best place yeah. but this is also where actually waking up in the night for 10-15 minutes can be an absolute blessing because that might be your quiet time yeah when you can do a meditation or yeah. just think through things and yes catch the negative thoughts and and but actually that can be such a lovely time because no one is demanding of your attention except for the cat maybe yeah 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 no I absolutely agree and it, and um it, 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 I mean I'm a night owl so I quite like the night I do quite like it when everybody else is asleep and I'm awake um not that I absolutely you know push for that but um but those moments when I if I am awake you know I think you just you just relax into it and you say well this is this is well this is this is what's going to happen now we'll see what how where it goes <laughs> let's yeah. be you know curious about it um and then I think if we can take that and the more you practice that the more you know I always say to all my clients we are all just practicing to be the person we become because every day whatever you're doing is feeding into your future self absolutely so, you know, you can choose whether you get aggravated with the cat at the door or you can choose whether you can just be like, oh, that's good. They're home. I'm really happy. Yeah. You know, let's see what's going to happen. And it, and the more you practice that, the more it filters into the rest of your life. It doesn't just become a nighttime thing. That sort of sense of being calm and curious enters the rest. Now, you know, I'm not saying we're all going to become Zen Buddha because <laughs> life is not like that. But, um, you know, it just helps build your resilience a bit more. And that's really what we want is that resilience through this period. Yeah. Just so that when we come out the other side, <laughs> we're actually half, you know, at least some of the person that we are when we went in. <laughs> exactly. Oh, brilliant. That was absolutely spot on. Thank you, Geraldine. So many useful things for people to use. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully hopefully um so probably um i'm thinking the last thing because we've obviously got our we're actually covering off quite nicely our four pillars of health that we had sleep yes. we've had the movement and exercise um and we actually we've had three of them already because rest rest relaxation is such a key thing that people just forget of course there's nutrition feed you know feeding for health eating for health rather than you know kind of <laughs> just eating because it's there it's that we there. do um so so making sure that we again we support our hormones and we can do that through the foods we eat you know eating um phytoestrogen rich foods things like um, soya um flax seeds things like that you know we know that we know we all know what a healthy diet looks like and we all know what a non-healthy diet <laughs> you know generally if you're opening 
I mean, I would I wouldn't even say this. It's not even if you're opening a packet because bloody apples and pears and all sorts of things come in packets. Um, yeah. But yeah, if if it's got less than five ingredients, that's a good sign. If you can pronounce all the ingredients, that's a really good sign. <laughs> it's true. And we we we've come to live in such a sort of processed food world yeah. that actually we've we often get away from the the the, the basics of well what are the actual ingredients here yeah 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 can I can I say that word without sounding it out and you know and 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 when you think if I were to make this would it have 15 ingredients or would it just have three exactly you know that that's a real real thing um and I think you know we've we've gone in this world we've edged towards you know convenience and comfort you know making our lives easier but we've lost the joy of stuff so you know for some people not everybody but for some cooking you know whilst you know you're time saving with the old microwave meal or whatever but what are you time saving for to go and sit and watch tv when you could spend 20 minutes doing a bit of chopping, you know, something that's quite mindless, create, you know, a little bit of creative. There's great pleasure in providing food for yourself and for other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, and it's a little exercise, a micro exercise. <laughs> you, could, you could practice some squats while you're, you know, doing your... <laughs> you could. <laughs> you could. Maybe not, but, but that, you know, that cooking element is part of, you know, part of relaxation and it's, it's yeah. part of being creative. And I think um, we've forgotten all of that in our desire to make our lives sort of easier and faster and, you know, and we've got to judge what, why what is that comfort giving me and is the payoff actually worth it or do I just do that little bit of work put together a meal learn to cook something whatever and actually enjoy that and have 20 minutes less tv time you know it's 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 it is a payoff or working because of course we're all working from home until midnight yes (laughs) yes I think there's a lot to be said for having a boundary around work time but that's another topic for another day that is a whole I know we have boundaries coming up as a monthly topic soon so (laughs) awesome that's brilliant thank you so much Geraldine you're very welcome lovely to talk to you